The riser is the definitive part of the bow. Along with the limbs, this is what you refer to when you talk about your bow. And it's more than just a big grip. It's the central hub for every attachment on your bow, and it can be the most costly component. The market covers both wooden and metal risers. The lower end risers cost around $100, while my Win & Win Eno CXD cost around $830, and was the most expensive riser on the market when I bought it. Then Hoyt released the Formula Ion X at over $900 or nearly $1,000 in Australia with GST. Seriously, you can buy an entire archery package with the price of one of those. So, what is the difference? Wooden risers are on the lower end of the price range, costing around $100 to $150. If you're a casual archer, this is probably what you'll be aiming for. The look and feel will be familiar and the price won't kill your hip pocket. This Samic journey costs around 140 US dollars on Lancaster Archery for the entire bow. Many of these risers have limited attachment options, often allowing for a sight and stabilizer, but little else. The limb pockets also tend to use specific limbs, so you can't freely swap them out. Metal risers are usually made from aluminium or magnesium for the lower end and carbon for the top end. These bows are designed for sport archery and their features are optimised for performance, being sturdier and having less vibration than a wooden riser. If you're taking up archery as a sport, this is the sort of riser you'll want to invest in. Generally speaking, the most expensive risers don't have that much difference between them, so again, it mostly comes down to preference and often appearance as well. The key advantage with metal takedown risers is that they almost always have universal modular attachments, so you can swap limbs, stabilizers and other accessories. The budget risers come up at about $100 to $200 and include brand names such as Samic, Cartel and SF. At best, they're glorified hunks of metal in the shape of a riser. This Samic Aguilar is typical of this price range. It looks cool and does the job, but that's about it. Cheaper risers can lack in manufacturing quality and finish. The grip on the angle is actually glued on and came off after a few months. Risers like these are usually categorized as entry level and their simplicity is appropriate for beginners. However, depending on how seriously you take the sport, you may find yourself wanting a bow with more flexibility and features sooner rather than later. The mid-range risers will cost around $300 to $600. These intermediate level bows have more advanced designs, making them lighter and more stable. Risers like the Hoyt Horizon, Formula XL and the Win & Win Win X are solid choices, providing good performance for a moderate price. If you're taking the sport seriously, but don't want to spend too much money, getting one of these will probably last you a lifetime. These are especially good if you anticipate outgrowing your bow fairly quickly, thus skipping that step and giving yourself the extra motivation to make your money's worth and using it frequently. Then there's a top end competition level. The professionals typically use either Hoyt GMX or Win & Win Inno CXT, but in the past couple of years, the release of the newer Hoyt Formula Iron X and the Win & Win Inno AL1 has added some more options at either end of the price range. These risers offer the best balance, efficiency and options for fine adjustments, such as adding weights to the riser. The manufacturers are more or less showing off the engineering here, and these risers are the choice of professionals. It's difficult to explain the differences without having a shot yourself. Think of it like explaining the differences between different models of cars and motorcycles. Roughly speaking, they all do the same thing, and it comes down to look and feel. Having shot one of these, there is definitely a difference between a high-end bow and a low-end bow. I feel like I've got more control of the bow, I've got more connection, and the feedback is much more sensitive. Design differences, such as the ergonomic shape of the grip and the overall weight of the riser, are tilt factors. The top-end risers also come with protective pouches and colourful, detailed manuals, whereas the cheaper risers come as is and usually with a single sheet of instructions. Which one you get mostly depends on preference, but there is a vital difference in how much you're willing to spend. How much you spend depends on how seriously you want to take the sport. 
a beginner probably won't make the most use of an expensive bow for a while, but the potential for growth is there. On the other hand, buying a cheap bow may be a limiting factor in the way you develop as an archer. If you're a casual archer, there's nothing wrong with using a cheap riser. However, if you want to take it to the competition level, be ready to fork out over $500, and that's just for the riser. As usual, hope you found it informative and enjoyable. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.